Hello all and welcome to the fourth video in my series on using aluminium extrusion profile in the workshop. In the last video in this series I made a drill stand and in this video, part two if you will, I'll be making a base for said drill stand. It's essentially a typical base with a movable fence you've no doubt seen many add to their pillar drills. The only difference with mine was figuring out a way to attach my drill stand to it. I'll show all the build steps first and then do a few test holes with it at the end. So what I have here under the drill stand is a piece of 15mm Conti board, Menamine face chip board, often used for shelving. It's cheap and more importantly was to hand in the workshop, so this is what I'll be working around. I've laid out a square of four holes on the Conti board. I drill a part of the way through, then flip over to finish the holes so as not to blow the Menamine too much. Here are the amassed parts to form the mount for the drill stand. Two pieces of black 2080 profile with a corner bracket, centre fixing, a short piece of silver 2020 profile. M5 flat sliding T-nuts with 8mm M5 hex screws providing the fixings. Everything slid together, gets tightened down to create a structure that will lift the drill stand, allowing a fence to slide underneath it, giving me a little more scope with the size of material I can drill. The fence also being a piece of 2080 profile, I'll use this plate to lift my mount and the drill stand, giving the fence a few mil clearance to pass underneath. You'll see what I mean. 25mm M5 screws, a large washer underneath and a sliding T-nut top to provide the fixing. Now the mount can be slid on and screwed down. That I think concludes the unusual part of this drill base. Now I can blast through some of the other steps that resemble actual woodworking. With the Conti board only being 15mm thick, I'm adding a sub base to it made from 12mm ply. Now that is a well planned shot even by my standards. What was I thinking? Anyway, plunge saw, plywood, bosh. The screw heads and washers holding the mount in place stick out from the underside of the Conti board. I've marked a cut out here to allow free access to them. Just like that, lovely. Some dogs on the bench help me square up while I get a few clamps on. Everything where it should be, I can pepper the underside with screws. Here I've removed the mount temporarily so as to route out some housings for T-slot rails. I'll be using the 30mm wide ones with a 19mm slot, the sort that'll accept a mitre gauge. Shout out to Peter Millard here for sorting me out with this old Festool fence for my little Mafel router. See Peter, I do actually use it. Housings prepared, I put the mount back on. I'll be adding this corner plate to it as an alignment guide for the drill stand. Then you can see how it gives the drill a flat face to line up to but also a position stop. Wish I could tell you I'd come up with a genius way to quickly clip on the drill stand to the base, but all the things I thought of would either be unwieldy, restrictive, or just not solid enough. So I went with the tried and tested, through holes for bolts and T-nuts for fixing. Unfortunately, the only bolts of appropriate length I had are M6 furniture bolts. Nothing wrong with them, but it means I have to use the type of T-nuts you see there. Profile slot shape, not the flat sliding ones. They're the only ones I have in M6 and don't slide as well as the flat ones, so until I get some M6 flat ones, these are likely to make putting the stand on and off a bit of a pain. I'll save you me lining up all the T-nuts and wrestling on. It took me easily two full minutes of jiggling. You can see the plate doing its thing there, both as a stop and for alignment. Although it will be easier to slide off and on when I get some flat sliding T-nuts, it's worth saying that my intention is to use the stand on the base the majority of the time, only removing it for special jobs here and there. So the fact that it takes a minute or two is no real biggie in the real world. The most important thing is, when brought together, it's a nice rigid mating. An example of the 30mm T-track here, on this occasion used as a mitre slot. I've got some of the same stuff here and I've already prepared some little sliding brackets for the fence. They're made up of a star knob, a 40mm long piece of 2020 profile, a large washer and an appropriate T-slot nut in M6. The washer is there to prevent the profile getting pulled into the 19mm slot, preventing the nut from locking. Those all figured out, it's time to chop the tractor length. For the most part when chopping aluminium at the mitre saw, I try not only to clamp it, but also put a bit of scrap below and behind the cut. Zero clearance, I suppose. It really helps keep the cuts in aluminium clean, cutting down the amount of deburring you need to do. A few fixing holes in these short tracks. It's important with these to deburr the holes if you want them seated flush, and likewise to countersink the holes for the screw heads. The bars and sliding nuts are pretty close fitting and don't take very kindly to the slightest obstruction. To fix each track is just four 10x3mm screws. 
You can see now why that extra 12mm ply layer was needed underneath. Once routed out for the track, there's not much left of the Conti board. So I showed the little brackets I made for the track a minute ago. I've tried to evenly position the track brackets and tighten them down. The black 2080 piece of fence there will be attached to them with trusty corner brackets and sliding tees, one each side of each bracket. The idea with the track brackets being tightened down is it allows me to, thanks to the play in the corner brackets, set the fence so it stands square to the base when tightened down. Happy with that. Moves nice and freely, stands up square and locks down tight. Right back like this, it gives me 120mm from drill center, ample for my needs. Finally have another use for this flip stop I bought for my mitre gauge in my original Banggood vid years ago. Sexy! So I was um and ring about adding this, at least right away. A sacrificial square under the drill in the base. Tempted as I was to leave it for now, it was the thought of you guys and the knowledge that you tune in to watch me do a fully half arse job, not some third arse job like some Johnny come lately. So here's to you all for pushing me to be a solid adequate. It's a little 50mm square from more of that 12mm ply. The router template for it I cunningly made from the 50mm rip, so once routing is finished, I can just snap the minimal super glue bond, chop it into 50mm lengths, and have 10 replacement sacrificial wasp names. One final job before using the thing is to make a protective banding around the base, reliably again made from more 12mm ply scraps. Okay, so I missed a couple of steps here, but you can see what's been done 45 mitre on the corners, and a cheeky coat of black paint because aesthetics super gluing the mitres, only to each other, not to the base. For workshop bits, I avoid glue if I can, it's a bit too committal. Instead, to fix the banding, rather than the far superior gold screw, I'm using the fancy silver ones I use on my furniture, which are extremely unforgiving to a badly seated bit, because aesthetics. And with that, it's done, ready for some test holes, and then hopefully, work. So especially for this, I bought a used Bosch GSB-13RE. Like pretty much all such corded percussion or impact drills, it has the 43mm or Euro colour. This particular model is nice and compact, has a metal keyless chuck, and like most of them, is switchable between drill only and impact. The reason these corded ones are so good for drill stands is they have a lock on button. 30 quid with free postage, what's not to like? The linear rails run really nice with the weight of the drill in them. To a point, it's like these bearings run better under load. I've marked both sides of this bit of scrap as I'll be flipping it. Also made a centre depression with an awl to seat the bit. Drop the bit on the mark, then snug the fence up and lock it off. As this piece fits within the fence width, I can set the flip stop and all. Quick double check of the points. Then on the flip side, the rebate there is the reason I'm flipping rather than turning. Anyway, looks good. Getting excited now. All it's got to do is drill straight. As you watch me doing this, remember this is a new drill and setup to me. Still not quite sure how hard I can push it, hence my lifting and dropping more than I probably need to. I've still to mess with the speeds yet as well. Here I think I had the dial on about third power or speed. It did feel when I pushed on it that it just wanted to plough through, but I'm in no rush to start beasting it. I want this to do more accurate depth holes rather than a lot of holes quickly. Looks about right from both sides from what I can see. Right through the crosshairs on either side. Here I've got the trusty bar again, like in the last video, to check with the square. It's a nice snug fit in these 6mm holes, no wobble to throw me off the scent. I'd like to see how square it is in the other orientation too, front to back if you like. No room for the square, so I level box it. 89.9 degrees. For now I think I'll settle for that. I've spent quite long enough up to this point dialing this thing in. I've put on a 19mm Forstner. This one I use for the counter bore for my chair fixing cover caps, also to seat the aluminium 20mm bars, which are more like 19.5. These bores I do to a 4mm depth, so I'll set up for that and see how we get on. Set the drill on the mark, snug up the fence and tighten down. Drill bit resting on the workpiece, I set the depth stop using 4mm worth of packers. If I need a little more, which given the teeth shape on the bit I probably will, I'll dial in the final depth with the thumb screw micro adjust there. Another classic Bish Bash Boss shot, arm in the way of the action. I have a couple of chair frames on the go behind the shot, which means space is very tight and restricting my shooting angles, but you will see it more clearly in a sec. So the hole measured 3.5mm deep, so I add another half turn to the micro adjust, which should do it. 
This gave me a perfect 4mm deep hole. More importantly, an evenly 4mm deep hole. Something I was trying to do, not always successfully, by hand drilling before. As more of a test of what the drill's got, I fit a 40mm Forstner. Doing alright to be fair. If I wasn't having to be mindful of the camera and grab the drill handle as well as the mount handle on the other side, I could apply better downward pressure. But it's getting through it. This is definitely at or around the limit for the drill motor though. Thankfully the stand itself feels solid even with me applying a good bit of force to it. All in all I'd say I'm happy with the drill stand and base. I made it specifically to do the through and counter bores for my chairs. Straight holes to an accurate depth. That I can do this by taking a stand to a frame nearing completion or by bringing component parts to the stand mounted to the base is exactly what I wanted. Not to mention that I can use the stand with a milling motor for small surfacing tasks. A few hours well spent I think. There are limitations in case anyone were to look at putting together their own. As I showed earlier, the fence all the way back limits you to 80mm stock thickness. I don't drill anything at over 64mm for my furniture, so I have no issue with that. Also, the fence positioned as you see here, you can see the plate hits the top of the fence. If I were using a small and short bit, this might be an issue, although I could just sit the workpiece on something to raise it up. Problem solved. The stand itself is also quite heavy. Clamping it to the side of something to drill could be a bit tricky in terms of lining up the bit to a mark. I have been looking at lasers to help on this score, which I'll likely end up getting in the new year. Other than that, this will serve me well I think, at least until such time as I can justify buying the Nova Voyager I've had my eye on. The next, and I think last in the series, will be build plans slash instructions for my overbelter machine. I still haven't stripped it for service yet, so it will likely be a new year video. In case you haven't seen it yet, I'll link part 1 where I build the drill stand below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below, and I'm always happy to answer any questions. Like if you did, sub if you aren't already, thanks button is there if you want to show your appreciation in that way, and as ever, if you made it this far, thanks for watching.